Teleode champs and here we are with the N2 MacBook Air. Let me know if you're getting one. Let me know if you think it's a ripoff. It's whatever. I have more videos coming on this, but this video here is purely selfish. I want to know how good this is in rendering, video editing, the stuff I mostly do on my laptop. And I have a MacBook Pro 16 with M1 Max, 32 cores, and yeah, 64 gigs RAM. How much difference is there between this? the M2 MacBook Pro, the old M1, and of course my MacBook Pro 16 maxed out. I think people are going a bit overboard with this thing. It's funny now that people are thermally throttling it. And for how long were these Apple people having a go at Intel? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Even Apple are not immune from thermodynamics. When you need more power, you get more heat. But this thing's good. It's nice. It's silent. So let's get into Final Cut and see its limitations and compare its render speeds compared to those laptops I was just talking about. So let's find its limitations. This is the base model. Now I want to know this myself. Maybe I can use this for editing videos. Now of course it doesn't have a HDR display but it can tone map in HDR. So you can still do HDR content. This project here is HDR. That's all I do is HDR. I work with ProRes and mostly HEVC which would be mostly iPhone footage and ProRes comes from my Panasonic, so I output to 10-bit HEVC HLG. That's the best way to output to HDR. Does anyone want to know how to make HDR footage? You can even use SD footage, actually. If you want to know how to do HDR footage in Premiere Pro and Final Cut, let me know down there in the comments, because it's pretty easy. Well, it's actually a little bit convoluted, but once you know it, it's pretty easy. So my point is here, it's pretty hard footage. Once you apply the effects and the color grading, and then once you export, you know, from ProRes to HEVC, crunching that down to HDR video, it's quite intensive. But in the timeline here, this MacBook Air has 8 gigs. It's the base model. Already with this simple project, there is swap being used. Now, Apple brag about having HEVC in ProRes, you know, media engines. So this is not really outside the scope of what it was designed for, but because at the end of the day, the MacBook Air is the basic entry-level laptop. It's not meant to be a pro laptop, and people are treating it like it's a pro laptop, and they're trying to use it outside the scope of what it was designed for, and they're surprised that it doesn't do it. It's just like, uh, duh. Use it within the scope of what it's designed for. This would be great for music production and video editing if you use H.264, HEVC, or ProRes. Outside of using those formats, this is not the best laptop for doing sort of video editing if you're not using those formats. So anyway, in the timeline we can see here, this is 6K footage. You would think that ProRes RAW would play back. And in performance setting and using it in quality mode, that's what I'm using right now, you'll see that it scrubs okay. It seems like it scrubs okay, no problem. But when you play back the footage, it's going to drop frames. That's just what it's going to do. It's going to drop frames with this 6K footage with the effects applied. Now, if I put it in better performance, it's smooth as butter. Scrubbing is ultra smooth and playback is smooth. You won't drop any frames whatsoever. No problems. That's what you would expect with ProRes. The same thing. Now, this is RAM limited and it is the base model, so it has the slower SSD. Would the next model up with the faster SSD make a difference? It would help, but the limiting factor here is RAM. You need more RAM. You want 16 at a minimum if you're going to be doing like video editing heavy video editing at least anyway if you're just doing your iphone footage whatever that's fine 8 gigs will do it but if you're going to get into heavier projects you want at least 16 gigs ram the faster ssd will only marginally make a difference and a lot of people wouldn't even notice the difference so i think the reason it's not being able to play back this prores footage is because of RAM limitations. Because if I take the effects off, it plays back the ProRes footage no problems whatsoever in quality mode, okay? That's what you'd expect with ProRes. HEVC footage from an iPhone, no problems whatsoever. It'll play back that in quality mode, scrubbing's fine, no issues. The limitation of this is the RAM and not being able to play back ProRes in the quality setting once I apply my grading and effects on the footage. Without the grading, no problems, it plays back that ProRes. With it, it'll drop frames and then put it in performance mode and it doesn't drop frames whatsoever, even with the effects on. So that's the limitations there. I do expect that it would play back that footage in quality mode with the grading if it had more RAM. So what about rendering speeds? And here we go, woof. So what you can see here is the MacBook Pro 16. Oh my God, what a beast, right? It's like twice as fast as the MacBook Air. Or the MacBook Air takes 
pretty much twice as long to render this footage. So that's ProRes RAW out to HEVC 10 bit. Now you see there that the MacBook Pro 13 M2, a little bit faster, makes sense, doesn't throttle as much. And there you can see the M1, yeah, quite a bit slower than both the M2s and yeah, not even in the ballpark of the MacBook Pro 16 with the M1 Max. So yeah, there's limitations there of this thing. I would recommend you get 16 gigs RAM. First port of call always is the RAM to me. Next, yeah, get the SSD because you probably want, you know, the faster SSD. But anyway, this can video edit, no problems, but keep it within the scope of what it was designed for. It's not a MacBook Pro 14 or 16. It can video edit, no problems, but your basic sort of stuff, right? Music production will be an absolute beast. Productivity, web surfing, all that sort of stuff. Yeah perfect for that keep it within the scope of what it was designed for and this is a great laptop i'll catch you in the next one telly ho